Yeah. Reports of ghost sightings. Different ghost stories. Dozens of ghost stories. Hello friends. You can discover countless instances worldwide where individuals assert to have encountered spirits or ghosts and even engaged in conversations with them. A multitude of individuals share accounts of having undergone supernatural occurrences. Numerous movies have been created on this subject, including well-known titles like The Conjuring, The Exorcist, and The Exorcism of Emily Rose. These films claim to draw inspiration from actual events. Additionally, a plethora of television programs exist, such as Ghost Hunters, in which individuals armed with advanced equipment embark on quests to capture spirits. They utilize technology to substantiate the existence of ghosts. Furthermore, certain individuals produce YouTube videos in which they communicate with the spirits of deceased individuals. Let's delve into today's video where we try to understand the reality underlying these phenomena. First and foremost, let's set aside events that possess apparent explanations. For instance, consider the well-known case of the Fox sisters. During the 1800s in America, three sisters garnered significant recognition within the spiritual community. These siblings, referred to as the Fox sisters, were reputed for their claimed ability to communicate with ghosts and spirits from a tender age. Seeking to engage with the spirits of the departed, people would turn to these sisters. The siblings would pose queries to the spirits, and in response, eerie sounds of walls banging would reverberate through their room. At times, enigmatic messages would materialize on blank cards. Their sessions of spirit talking, wherein they engaged with these apparitions, gained considerable popularity in the America of that era. This venture proved lucrative for the three sisters, amassing them considerable wealth. However, a turning point arrived when the husband of one of the sisters passed away. Despite being an Orthodox Christian who believed in these supernatural occurrences, he implored his wife to desist from such practices to cease communicating with spirits. Following his demise, the grieving sister descended into a state of depression and resorted to alcohol. Discord began to plague the relationships between the siblings. It was then that this particular sister publicly admitted that, for an extended period, the trio had been deceiving people. The sisters hadn't actually conversed with ghosts and spirits, rather, they had been employing minor deceptions. Techniques included attaching objects to strings and orchestrating their unnatural descent, as well as generating the banging sounds by striking walls with their feet. This sister contended that the fervent emotions of the people facilitated their readiness to embrace such illusions. Some even convinced themselves that they could tangibly sense the touch of spirits. Another renowned tale revolves around the Amityville haunted house. Nestled in New York, the dwelling dubbed Amityville was the site of a tragic event. Ronnie, a resident of the house, committed a heinous act by taking the lives of his own family. During his court appearance, Ronnie asserted that he could discern voices within the house, attributing the influence of these spectral sounds to his murderous actions. Subsequently, another family, George and Kathy, relocated to this very house. They too professed to have experienced these eerie sounds and reported sightings of apparitions. Their time in the house was marked by encounters with inexplicable phenomena, ultimately culminating in their decision to vacate the premises. The enigma of this narrative thickens as subsequent developments unfold. Later reports by ABC News exposed a web of falsehoods. It became evident that the initial murderer had fabricated his story in an attempt to evade punishment. Similarly, the subsequent couple who moved in had also resorted to deceit, driven by the prospect of monetary gain. Their intent was to secure lucrative book and film deals, which led them to propagate the untruths surrounding their haunted house claims. Let's set aside instances of deception and false claims where the fabrications are clearly noticeable. However, what about scenarios where individuals are not being dishonest? Consider films that draw inspiration from real-life events. Take, for instance, the 2017 film Veronica. In this movie, 
During a solar eclipse, the protagonist Veronica and her friends utilize a Ouija board in their school's basement to make contact with her deceased father and boyfriend. This ritual is interrupted by a nun, resulting in the Ouija board breaking and a malevolent entity possessing Veronica. Interestingly, the film purports to be inspired by actual occurrences. But does the reality align with the depicted events? The factual narrative revolves around a girl named Estefania, a case that garnered considerable attention, even earning a mention of paranormal activities in the police report regarding her home. Upon watching such films, you might be inclined to believe that there must be some degree of truth behind them, some kernel of authenticity. After all, with multiple films portraying similar themes, one would think at least certain elements must be grounded in reality, particularly when these movies claim to be inspired by true events. However, it's crucial to discern the distinction between stating something is based on true events and inspired by true events. When questioned about the film, its director clarified that these differences exist for a reason. This leads us to the divergence between the actual account and its cinematic representation. In reality, news reports indicate that Estefania's parents were alive, whereas the film portrays her demise within three days. In actuality, Estefania passed away several months later, following a period of suffering from seizures. Moreover, the real narrative doesn't exclude the possibility that Estefania may have grappled with an undiagnosed psychotic disorder, a potential aspect unexplored due to the limited medical resources in their rural locale during the 1990s, when technology and medical science were less advanced compared to today. Lastly, Estefania's parents claimed to have experienced paranormal phenomena after her death, including hearing their daughter's screams. However, upon psychological assessment, her mother was found to be struggling with emotional instability, anxiety, and a desire for attention. Delving into this case's intricacies serves to highlight its commonality. Such instances frequently serve as prototypes for the inspiration behind horror films. You might argue that even if we hypothetically consider that a single family member had a psychological ailment, what if the entire family exhibits similar behavior and asserts experiencing paranormal phenomena? In such instances, there exists a phenomenon termed mass psychogenic illness, also recognized as shared psychotic disorder. This phenomenon was notably observed in the well-known Burari case, which involved the tragic mass suicide of 11 family members and garnered attention in Delhi. Another peculiar incident unfolded within an Australian family of five during a road trip. This distress led to the family members parting ways and disappearing temporarily, although they eventually reunited. This scenario is often attributed to shared delusional disorder, a condition where individuals who share close relationships tend to reinforce each other's delusions. In cases like these, where an entire family collectively adopts certain beliefs or experiences, it's essential to explore psychological and psychiatric explanations, considering the potential role of shared delusions and psychogenic factors. Now, let's delve into more intriguing phenomena, those that might astonish you when you uncover their mechanics. Let's begin by examining the enigmatic nature of Ouija boards. These boards have made appearances in a plethora of films such as The Exorcist, Paranormal Activity, and The Conjuring 2. Primarily, they are claimed to serve as a conduit for communicating with spirits. These boards are inscribed with alphabets, numbers, and yes and no indicators. The setup also includes a triangular pointer called the planchet. To utilize it, individuals venture into dimly lit spaces, light candles, shut their eyes, and summon spirits. If a spirit is believed to be present, they beckon it to engage in communication. Participants then place their hands on the pointer and pose questions to the spirits. If the spirit's response is affirmative or negative, the pointer starts moving in the corresponding direction. What's intriguing is that, in many cases, individuals assert that their hands move involuntarily. While some may approach this activity lightheartedly, many genuinely believe that their hands are being controlled by the spirits, facilitating communication. The question arises, how can such a phenomenon occur? The answer lies in a psychological concept known as the ideomotor effect. The ideomotor effect is a psychological occurrence wherein our bodies move unconsciously without our conscious awareness. 
Consider instances where your hand moves without you consciously intending it. Similar to the sensation of falling just before you drift into slumber, an experience referred to as the hypnic jerk, your body can move on its own without conscious direction. However, it is distinct from the ideomotor effect, as it typically transpires during the transition to sleep while the ideomotor effect can manifest while you're awake. This phenomenon elucidates how individuals may unwittingly attribute their actions to external influences, like spirits, when in fact, it's their own unconscious movements at play. Your brain sends signals to guide your body's movements, yet your conscious mind remains oblivious to this process. An illustrative example can be experienced right where you are. Take a pendulum or a lightweight object attached to a string, even a button or a ring will suffice. By swinging, it now functions as a pendulum. Observe its oscillations. Here's what you need to do. Hold your hand in front of you and watch the weight as it oscillates naturally. Focus on mentally directing it to move in a clockwise direction. Begin to sway it clockwise with your intention and you'll notice that it gradually starts moving in that direction on its own. Similarly, if you wish to induce an anti-clockwise motion, the weight will begin moving in that direction without any conscious effort on your part. It's not your conscious will that's driving this movement, rather, your brain's inclination directs it to respond accordingly. Give it a try for yourself. Individuals who ardently believe in the efficacy of Ouija boards, convinced that they're genuinely communicating with spirits, experience this phenomenon. Their brains unconsciously generate mental images and memories of the departed individual with whom they aim to communicate with. When inquiries are posed, their brains employ these images and memories to formulate responses, prompting unconscious bodily movements. Numerous scientific investigations have delved into this phenomenon, and a simple blindfold test serves as an example. If it were indeed spirits moving the planchet on the Ouija board, even when participants are blindfolded or have their eyes closed, the planchet should move accurately. However, the actual outcome contradicts this expectation. Instead of following coherent paths, the pointer provides nonsensical responses. When participants are uncertain about the positions of yes and no, they often guide the pointer randomly. The idea motor effect also manifests in cases where individuals assert that they are under possession, believing a spirit resides within them. It's essential to acknowledge that not every instance of such claims is deceitful. In certain cases, when people genuinely believe they are possessed and consequently begin exhibiting corresponding behaviors, their bodies may actually be moving involuntarily without their conscious awareness. This phenomenon gives rise to the perception of possession as their bodies seem to move independently, driven by their subconscious mind. A parallel situation arises with individuals who profess to possess the ability of automatic writing, claiming that they can channel spirits that guide their hand to write messages. This mirrors the same principle. While many who assert such abilities are likely dishonest, there are individuals who genuinely believe in their gift of automatic writing. These individuals are actually influenced by the ideomotor effect as their subconscious minds influence their movements. Shifting focus, let's consider the phenomenon of ghost hunters employing advanced equipment to capture evidence of ghosts. Frequently, ghost hunters employ infrared cameras that capture thermal patterns. These cameras create an image resembling a negative photograph and they often use them to capture what they interpret as spirits. However, the reality is that changes in temperature are distinctly visible through an infrared camera. To illustrate, if you sit on a chair and rub your back against it, the friction generates heat. Later, when you stand up and an infrared camera is employed to observe the chair, it might appear as if someone is still seated due to the residual heat. Another intriguing example involves walking on a floor with wet feet after leaving a bathroom. Through an infrared camera, the wet footprints can resemble the marks of a spirit as the temperature of the feet contrasts with that of the surroundings. Consider this engaging video that delves into these details further, shedding light on these concepts. Perhaps you're all sitting around the dining room table, having a seance, calling on spirits from the past. A thermal pattern you might catch could be someone that was sitting in a chair, perhaps. Another thought that came to mind, maybe it was a crew member from one of those shows leaning up against the wall. In this shot here, my thermal reflection as I walk across a wood floor in a home. 
could be mistaken for something else. Moreover, these ghost hunters commonly carry an EMF meter, which proves intriguing in its own right. This meter reacts to electromagnetic fields emitted by electronic devices like cell phones, two-way radios, and various other gadgets. Virtually any electronic contraption, from computer mice to camera battery packs, can cause fluctuations on this meter. Another tool frequently utilized is the motion sensor light. Even a mere passing mouse in an abandoned structure can trigger these lights, allowing them to assert a spirit's presence. These technical gadgets often serve as the basis for claims that are often nonsensical, yet these claims are presented on television as genuine ghost sightings. This trend is prevalent not only in the United States, but also in numerous other countries. Why do they employ such tactics? The answer lies in the appeal these depictions hold for viewers, driving up television ratings, or TRP. Similarly, showcasing ghosts on the big screen translates into substantial box office earnings. Now, even YouTubers have embraced the trend of sharing ghost stories. While there's nothing inherently wrong with this practice, as long as it's presented purely for entertainment purposes, it's important to maintain a clear distinction. I personally derive enjoyment from watching horror films. They offer a distinct kind of thrill, and the fear they evoke is undeniably entertaining. However, the issue arises when TV shows, films, or YouTubers assert with certainty that they've encountered authentic ghosts, reinforcing the existence of spirits. Such claims are frankly baseless. While entertainment is a valid purpose, misleading audiences, promoting superstition, and making false assurances is decidedly unethical. In the realm of these subjects, it's imperative to retain a critical perspective. I hope you found this episode informative. If you did, I kindly request you to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I would love to hear your suggestions for future video topics in the comments section below. Thank you sincerely for your support. We will meet again very soon, but in the meantime, please feel free to explore my other videos. Goodbye.